A senior fellow at Singapore's Middle East Institute, James Dorsey. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Uh, now, we're witnessing the first U.S. fatalities uh, in, the, in the region with this possibly triggering a wider conflict. What are your thoughts? Well, we're clearly at an inflection point. Uh, and as your uh, commentators and reporters have noted, it, Biden is caught between a rock and a hard place in two aspects. On the one hand, he does not want to um, ex uh, escalate the conflict. He does not want an open confrontation with Iran. But on the other hand, the uh, deterrence uh, tactics that he's used until now, tit for tat uh, attacks back and forth, that hasn't done ver the Americans very, very, very uh, much good. Uh, it has simply not worked. And on the other hand, he is increasingly under pressure, certainly from hardliners in the United States, to uh, confront Iran directly. Essentially, you're hearing from people like, uh, uh, like Senator Graham, like former Vice President Pence, that it's time to hit Iran and to hit Iran hard, which would mean an escalation of the conflict. Now, the other rock and hard place that he's caught in between is that obviously, if he were to force a ceasefire in Gaza, the assumption is that all of these attacks would stop. But at the same time, uh, Biden supports the goal uh, of trying to destroy Hamas. So he's got some very hard choices to make and how, how he makes those choices is going to determine what happens next. So what do you think is going to happen next? You're saying that he doesn't want to see an escalation in the region. He doesn't want to go into a direct confrontation with Iran. What would be his next move? I assume that uh, he's not going to back down on uh, his opposition to a ceasefire in Gaza at this point, even if he's going to pressure and has been pressuring the Israelis with limited success to change their tactics in Gaza, and that he's going to be asking his advisors and his military uh, chiefs for a way of retaliating, but then one that is very calibrated and that will allow the Iranians uh, or not force the Iranians to retaliate in kind. Right, and we did see a, a pause in the uh, attacks recently a humanitarian pause, many had called it. Uh, and we de did see the cessation of these attacks on U.S. bases during that time frame. We do know that there's a two-month ceasefire on the table, the negotiating table now at least, with the head of the CIA and Qatar and Egypt. Do you think that they will go through with that two-month ceasefire? It's hard to say. I mean, what is noticeable is that the Israelis, to some degree, have changed their tone in the last 24 hours. 24 hours ago, the Israeli mood was that the gap was too wide between Hamas and Israel. Uh, since the meeting in Paris between the uh, Qatari prime minister and the intelligence chiefs of the United States, Egypt and Israel, the Israelis are sounding more uh, optimistic. The problem is that the two month uh, ceasefire that was put forward by the Israelis uh, does not end the war. It simply freezes the war. And the Israelis have insisted that after that ceasefire, the war would continue, even if it may continue in a very different form than we're seeing it today. And on the other hand, Hamas insists that uh, there can only be a prisoner exchange if there is an end to the war. And so it's not quite clear how that gap is being bridged. All right, James Dorsey, it was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for being with us here on the News Hour. Always a pleasure to be with you.